powerful and combustible liquids. The stakes are high. Fire stemming from ignition of these waves can cause injury, burn, environmental damage, and in some cases, even death. As an employee, it's essential that you learn how to safely store, dispense, and handle these liquids. Let's start with the basics. Simply put, flammable and combustible liquids catch fire more quickly than other materials. They also give off more heat when they burn. Scientists have created a system for understanding when vapors from these liquids might ignite, called flashpoints. A flashpoint is the lowest temperature at which a liquid gives off enough vapors to catch fire. Gasoline, for example, has a flashpoint of negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 42 degrees Celsius, meaning it can catch fire at those temperatures below zero. For most employees, it's not necessary to memorize flashpoints, but you should understand this. There is an inverse relationship between flashpoints and flammability. So, the lower the flashpoint, the more flammable a liquid will be. There are two ways to prevent workplace accidents with these volatile liquids. First, keep areas well ventilated to prevent the buildup of vapors. And second, control sources of ignition. Whenever you work with one of these liquids, keep these two factors in mind. At your workplace, flammable and combustible liquids may be stored in a ventilated room with explosion-proof lighting and electrical equipment. You will likely notice warning signs outside and inside the room. Depending upon the liquids in the room, you might even see fire-resistant cabinets, a fire-resistant room, or fire protection gear nearby. If you're preparing to work with a flammable or combustible liquid, you must begin by reading the safety data sheet, or SDS. Every workplace must have a readily accessible file of safety data sheets with an SDS for every chemical used on the job. You can always request time to review the safety data sheet. I recommend doing that before working with any flammable or combustible liquid. These sheets are invaluable as they provide information about safe storage, handling, and dispensing. The SDS will also tell you if the liquid's flammable limits, any chemicals you shouldn't use alongside the product, and what to do if an accident happens. If the liquid you're using has other labels, such as a Department of Transportation or DOT label, or a Hazardous Materials Information System label, read them thoroughly as well. If a label is falling off or is difficult to read, alert a supervisor. Also seek help if there's conflicting information on these labels. With these volatile chemicals, information and understanding is key to safe handling and storage. Once you've reviewed the SDS and any other labels, you're ready to handle the liquid. When you dispense a flammable or combustible liquid, there's a lot to keep in mind. Follow all safety procedures listed and only use approved containers. Try to take only what you'll need for your work task and leave the container tightly closed when the liquid isn't in use. You must also protect your airways when using flammable or combustible liquids. Use a mask if necessary and make sure you're in a well-ventilated room. It's worth mentioning this again. You must follow the protective steps outlined on the liquid safety data sheet. This sheet is there to protect you and your colleagues. Use any personal protective equipment outlined by the warning labels and SDS. This might include goggles, gloves, a respirator, or a protective mask. You want to stay away from any potential sources of ignition, such as machinery or electrical equipment. With some liquids, the heat from a furnace or portable heater is enough to cause ignition. Of course, lit cigarettes don't belong anywhere near a combustible or flammable liquid. Static electricity is an often discounted and poorly understood risk factor for ignition. Just like rubbing your feet against the carpet or a balloon against your hair, static electricity builds up when a liquid moves through a container, tubing, or pump. Grounding the containers, which means having a pathway for the static electricity to leave the container, can help alleviate this risk. Bonding, a safety procedure in which two containers are connected with a current conducting wire, also helps minimize the risk of ignition. If you're using a liquid that requires grounding and bonding, make sure you fully understand the procedures before you get to work. Ask a supervisor for help if you need guidance or are working with a liquid for the first time. When you've completed your work task, return the flammable or combustible liquid promptly to the storage area. Always return the container to the exact location it came from. Make sure the lid is on tight and don't stack the containers. Your supervisor will let you know if certain chemicals cannot be stored together. Now, hopefully you'll never experience an accident or spill at work, but as part of your training, you've got to be prepared for one. Make sure you know where to find everything from personal protective equipment fire extinguishers to eye flushing stations. Be 
Before you begin using a flammable or combustible liquid, you should know exactly what to do if you inhale, ingest, or have skin contact with the liquid. Above all, working with flammable or combustible liquids demands a deep appreciation of the safety precautions. Accidents happen when workers are either untrained or inattentive. Don't hesitate to ask questions if you're unsure. Your supervisor would much rather answer a question than deal with an accident.